Welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. I am your host, Tony Roy. This is a special episode of the podcast. Uh, we are lucky to have with us a special guest. We're going to be talking about um, the impact of pickleball on our bodies and our minds. They're going to study, uh, they're trying to study as broad as they can uh, about the sport. And so we wanted to have them on the podcast to share what they're doing and also to see if you as listeners want to participate in this really exciting project. Uh, Ted, it's a pleasure to have you. Ted Yem. Uh, Ted, I'm going to let you, you have a lot of titles, so uh, I'm going to let you uh, describe your titles to the audience and then we'll get started with and We'll dive in. Excellent. Uh, thank you for having me, Tony. Um, so my name is Ted Yam. I'm a physical therapist out of St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I, and I have been involved in uh, outpatient physical therapy uh, for uh, 22 years now. Um, and I currently practice in an outpatient setting. I'm the clinical director of one of our clinics in, in the St. Louis area. But I also work with uh, St. Louis University at their TIP lab, uh, which is a, an injury prevention lab. Uh, and we have uh, started uh, a survey of pickleball injuries in, from pickleball players themselves. And uh, we're hoping to broaden that into a much larger study uh, over a, a three to five year period. Yeah, I understood. I understood from our conversation earlier, Ted, that this is like the tip of the iceberg, right? This is just, you know, we're trying to get like a, whether you call it a baseline or call it like, a, okay, we need to get like our arms around this thing some, and then from there we can hopefully continue to explore different uh, facets of pickleball's relationship to human beings, bodies, and minds. It sounds like. Yeah. So um, I was getting, I was starting to see some, some numbers come out, some pickleball injury numbers come out. Um, but what I was seeing, the, the stuff that was being reported was all emergency room data, uh, which is not particularly accurate. Uh, and so it was painting, I was seeing headlines like pickleball injuries have increased five times and all this other stuff. And, and I started thinking, well, wait, wait a minute, pickleball participation has increased 10 times. So like, of course the injuries have gone up. So then we started looking at, I, I got with the, the people at St. Louis University and we started looking at, okay, so how should we look at this? And kind of what we came to was that we wanted to survey pickleball players directly uh, to get a sense of their injuries because we felt that some injuries are probably not being reported at all because you don't go to the emergency room for them. And uh, the emergency room data was making it look like pickleball was extremely dangerous, and we just didn't feel that that was really the case. So after we started having that discussion, we started thinking, okay, but we should look at at general health with pickleball as well. And so we started building some of those questions into our survey, and that has blossomed into once we get our survey data, we can start planning for some uh, uh randomized controlled trials to start testing some injury prevention strategies, as well as start putting uh, some numbers with how, other ways that pickleball improves your health. Yeah, and it's not, it's really timely, Ted. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm going to bet you, and, and I haven't introduced you to our audience yet, but our, you know, our audience is, is very engaged with pickleball. You know, they're, they're, there's not a, these aren't casual pickleball players that listen to this podcast. They don't just stumble on this podcast. Uh, and we have a very uh, loyal uh, listener base, right? We have a, a base that really is into the sport. And I'm, I'm confident they've heard about the that $400 million article that came out or headline that came out. So everybody grabbed onto it and said $400 million in claims from pickleball. Right. Um, but there's a much bigger picture. So I think this study is not just timely, it's, it's, it's important, right? Because it's, I think it's important for, for persons who haven't yet, yet played pickleball, not to shy away from the sport because of a headline right. on some insurance claims without having a bigger picture. And I'll tell you this anecdotally, you know, I've been, I've been at this, I've been playing pickleball for eight years and I've been, uh, coaching in the coaching uh, space for about six of those, um, the impacts on players anecdotally is just out of control. And it's not, you know, it's not like uh, it's not a occasional thing. It's, it's so pervasive uh, that you got to think that this, the, I mean, if the survey doesn't bear this out, I'll, I'll eat a hat. I'll somehow I'll find a hat and I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to swallow it because there's almost no way that the study won't validate. And in fact, I, I think I, I would venture to guess that the study would, if I was betting on it, I would take the over you know, the over under on it, I would take the over on whatever baseline you want to set for yourself. I'll take the over on the survey exceeding the, um, uh, a, a reasonable guess as to what might, uh, might come out. So Ted, let's talk about, uh, the, we talked about tip of the iceberg and there's, 
several phases. This. Some of the phases aren't yet defined. I understand that because you're very early in the process. But tell us a little bit about the survey that you're currently undertaking. And then um, I'll, I'm going to include it in the show notes, but tell, tell players how they can get involved in, in this phase. And then we can talk about the next, the next steps and how they can stay involved in the process. So let's start with the first phase. So the first phase uh, that we have developed is an online uh, survey uh, that asks players, you know, some demographic questions, age and and the, these types of things, uh, and then gets into how much pickleball are you playing and uh, what's your level, your skill level of pickleball. And then we start asking to for uh, some information on, on what type of injuries you've sustained playing pickleball so, so that we can get a good handle on what those things are. Um, we also have have put in a, a couple of questions about mental health, just a just a baseline touch on mental health, just to see are pickleball players generally generally pretty happy. Which I'm hoping that the survey is going to find that that they are pretty happy, and you know that's something that we can build off of. Um, so the real point of doing this survey, the, the way that we're doing it, is is to get a really good, accurate picture of what the injuries are in pickleball, so that we can start doing things to help people. Uh, to uh, to to avoid those injuries if we can, um, you know we we have had a lot of in our startup days like this we have had a lot of help from uh, some really great partners. Uh, Duper has been really good uh, at helping us reach out through their newsletter and and those types of things. Uh, uh, the St. Louis Shock uh, from LLP has jumped on board, and so so that is a really good one. My company, Peak Sport and Spine, uh, in St. Louis, uh, we've been we've been pretty instrumental in getting this started, and so has SSM Health Physical Therapy in in this area too. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to all those people because they've really helped us get going, uh, and that has that's I think is going to help us uh, get into the next phase as, as quickly as we can. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, as we mentioned, I mean, I think this this information is super helpful. For for the industry, right? For the pickleball industry, for the just the the and when I say industry, I don't mean you know I mean just everybody in pickleball players as well because right you may be able to pivot this to like a study on or recommendations on you know particular injury uh, prone areas and and perhaps even how to avoid them and things like that. So that's awesome. Um, so if a if a listener, as I mentioned, our listeners are, are generally have a deeper involvement with the sport. If one of our listeners, somebody listening, a player listening to this pod, this particular episode wants to um uh wants to participate in the survey uh again we'll put it in the in the notes down below but what's the best way for them to to become involved with that um if you search for uh slu tip lab on uh either instagram or facebook uh you can get to that page and there is a, a link to the survey from that page it's probably the easiest way is probably to go through go through your show notes notes and and uh read okay. and hit the the uh the survey link from there. The survey takes, I mean, I think that we put down 10 to 20 minutes. Most people are filling it out in less than 10 minutes. It's the, not, the, we're not the, asking. It didn't take that long. I took it. I took yeah. it. It didn't take that long. It was, and it was super pain, painless and and you share some information about yourself. It's it's anonymous, right? So right. Um, yeah. you, you're, there's no problem with like your comp, your information, you know, being shared or it's, it's going to be what, like, aggregated or aggregated and then yeah. uh, use in an aggregate manner. And then there's a, there, the next step, because I did this as well, is uh, I know at the end of the survey, it says, if you want to stay involved, then you, they send you somewhere else where you can, there you share your email, because obviously you need to be contacted with further steps. Mm -hmm. But if sort of a player wants to be, I personally, I think from a personal standpoint, I want to be involved in this project from from uh, uh, cradle to grave, right? From the beginning until it expires as much as I can. And so I gave my email. Um, and if a player gives their email, you guys would then, uh, 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 they'd potentially be in the pool of players who would be sent further follow-ups. And then they, I guess they can make a decision right. at that point. They don't want to anymore, but they, they would Absolutely. at least get the, the invite to continue with the process, right? Right. Yeah. And we would pretty much just keep giving them information about things that are coming up and, you know, uh, parts of this that are that are moving forward. The next thing that we'll do. So so this this injury data that we're getting now, this is called retrospective data, meaning that we're looking back and getting injuries. And that's good data, but better data is prospective data. So like the next phase, the next like immediate phase of this is. So as those people who have participated and said they wanted to keep participating, there'll be a group of those people that we uh, we ask to participate in recording their injuries going forward for a certain period of time so that we can verify the accuracy of our retrospective data. 
Um, and then, you know, and then those people are, are going to be probably first in line to uh, try out some of our um, our injury prevention strategies as well, because we'll have some data on them uh, going forward. So so that's that's kind of the advantage of, of those types of things. So I want to be first in line for the uh, for the shoulder injury prevention thing, because <laughs> uh, I, I came from tennis. So I already had some, you know, some pre existing ah, okay. stuff from the serve, you know, and so. Whenever I when I started my my going crazy on my volley, sometimes I'll start throwing the the, the shoulder out first, get that bursitis going. Yeah, so whatever mm -hmm. we can do to avoid that, would be awesome. So, so it sounds right. like uh, um, so I'm gonna uh, 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 make a, a, a I'm gonna suggest to our listeners, listen, this is a great project. Um, uh, you know, help the if, if we can help this uh, group get their uh, their study continuing, right? Make you complete the survey, get it going on. Um, uh, they don't, they, 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 there's not a hard and fast, uh, date, but we're going to set, uh, mid August as the deadline for you guys. So get this done as soon as you can. If you have time today, get on there and do it. If you feel comfortable doing the, uh, continuing thing, why not? You know, super helpful for us as, as, uh, as a sport in general, but also individually as players, it'll help us, uh, it'll help us figure that out. Um. Ted, I think we covered pretty well where we're at right now. What we need to do next, is there anything else that uh, that would be uh, good for the order? Uh, well, I just uh, thank you for for mentioning that uh, kind of deadline date. Um, we're looking to get 2,000, uh, a little over 2,000 people uh, for this survey to get started with. We will actually keep it open after that and continue to collect data because the more people we get, the more accurate our data is. But we can really start doing our analysis at 2,000, and we're about halfway there. And so, like, if if people can really get on it, we can we can get this first set of data out and that really helps us move into our, our next set of things. And, and there just are a lot of exciting things to look at in pickleball. Uh, and we want to get moving on that. I have a, uh, a, a dinner, a dinner that's, uh, uh, that's counting on this with Ted, a dinner bet. So if the pickleball therapy can push it over 2000, then come on, your favorite host gets, uh, gets a dinner from Ted. Just kidding about that, but let's get this thing done. And one other thing, folks, uh, and Ted, I assume this is okay. If you if you want to share the link in your groups, share it in your groups. And oh, your team reaches yes. with your pickleball clubs, post about it on Facebook, whatever, you know, pickleball players go in there, answer the questions. I think that'd be awesome. So um, uh, uh, get the word out if you can. If you're an ambassador in your area, share it. There's no reason not to. Uh, again, the idea here is to get the information that will help, uh, help Ted and his, his group and also help our sport and help all of us individually as pickleball players. So the sooner we can get that done, uh, the better. Uh, Ted, it was a pleasure having you as part of the podcast. Uh, again, the, the the link will be in the show notes. Um, and uh, please keep us posted. We'll continue to have you on as a guest as this study and survey progresses. And as there's more information available, we'd love to share it with our uh, audience. Yeah, I, I really look forward to coming back and, and kind of sharing what we're finding, uh, you know, as things are going along, because I, I think that that's going to be really interesting for everyone to hear. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Ted, and uh, good luck with the project. Thank you very much.